This video is on class 11, chapter 13, Water. Now we all know that planet Earth is also called as Blue Planet. And I think we all know the reason behind it. And the reason planet Earth is called the Blue Planet is due to the abundant water on its surface. And if you look at the entire solar system, liquid water is a rare commodity. Over 70% of it is found on the Earth's surface. In fact, our human bodies, plants, animals are mostly made up of water. And that's what makes water a rare commodity in the entire solar system. So that was a little introduction part of this chapter. We will now move ahead with the first topic, hydrological cycle. So this word hydrological cycle is known as water cycle. Can you recollect this picture of water cycle? It describes the continuous movement of water on above and below the surface of the earth by the physical process of evaporation, condensation and precipitation. So basically, if you notice, water is being reused. The same water is moving to the land from ocean and then ocean to the land. So this entire thing forms a cycle. And that is what is called as hydrological cycle. And this cycle has been happening for billions of years because the earth is estimated to be 4.5 billion years old. Hence the water cycle has been working for billions of years. And basically now it has become the most important element for the existence of life on earth. And if this cycle doesn't continue, then all the creatures on earth will not get sufficient water and that can be detrimental to all the living beings on earth. So here it says the distribution of water on earth is quite uneven. What we mean by that is only 3% of water is fresh and the remaining 97% is ocean water. And ocean water is extremely salty. Human body only needs a small amount of salt and that makes the ocean water not fit for consumption. And if you look at the 3% of fresh water that exists on earth, in that 69% is found in glaciers. Then 30% is the underground fresh water that we extract with the help of bore wells. And the remaining less than 1% of fresh water is located in lakes, rivers and swamps. And another important aspect here is that many places on earth have plenty of water while others have very limited quantity. If you look at the statistic, this is what makes water a rare commodity and it is also highly exploited. Moments back I told you about the water cycle. So water cycle and hydrological cycle is the same. So basically in this cycle, the circulation of water within the earth's hydrosphere is in the form of liquid, solid and gas. Now evaporation is the process by which water is converted into water vapor, which is in gaseous state with the help of heat. After evaporation, condensation takes place. In condensation, water vapor turns into liquid or solid depending on how low the temperature is. After condensation, precipitation takes place. Now precipitation occurs both in the form of rainfall, snow and ice pellets. If it is rain, then it is in liquid state and if it is snow and ice pellets, then it is in solid state. So this is how water circulates within the Earth's hydrosphere. The renewable water on the earth is constant while the demand is increasing tremendously. Now this leads to crisis in different parts of the world. Have a look at this world map. You can see the countries currently dealing with extreme water scarcity. Dark color represents the country with extreme shortage of water. Pause the video and have a look at it. Let's go to the next topic, relief of the ocean floor. Now when we say relief in geography, it means the topography of an area. So relief of the ocean flow means the topography of the ocean floor. If you take a model of planet Earth and start digging in wherever you want to, wherever you are able to create a depression on the outer layer of the Earth, that is where oceans are formed. So basically oceans are the great depression of the Earth's outer layer. Wherever there is a depression, water gets accumulated, right? That's how oceans are formed. If you look at the world map, you will notice that the continents are not necessarily merged with each other. I mean with an exception of Europe and Asia, they merge with each other. However, if you look at North America, Europe, Australia, Africa, South America, Antarctica, they don't merge with each other. But when it comes to oceans, they merge naturally into one another. That means oceans of the world are connected with each other. We cannot create a boundary and say this is part of Atlantic and the other part is Pacific Ocean. But still for the studying purpose, geographers have divided the oceanic part of the Earth into four oceans. They are Pacific, Atlantic, Indian and Arctic. 
The various seas, bays, gulfs and other inlets are part of these four large oceans. Because ultimately all the rivers, inland waterways, everything falls into a sea and sea is very much part of ocean. If you get an opportunity to jump in an ocean, you see that the major portion of the ocean floor is found between 3 to 6 km from the sea level. Now sea level and ocean floor are two different things. A sea level is the level of the sea surface. Once you are at the sea level, you need to go 3 to 6 km below in order to reach the ocean floor. Once you are at the bottom of the ocean floor, the land under the water has exact similar physiographic features like how we see outside on a landmass. What I mean by that is, even ocean floor has large mountains, deep trenches and long plains. These features are exactly what we see on continents. And the reason behind the formation is due to tectonic activities, volcanic eruptions and depositional processes. So this is how we know that there are various landforms under the ocean water and the world there exactly looks like how we see up on the landmass. Now we are going to read about the divisions of the ocean floor. The ocean floors can be divided into four major divisions. So I want you all to pay attention to this topic. Once you know everything that is there in this topic, you will very much understand everything that is there to know about the hidden world at the bottom of the ocean. The first one is continental shelf. You can pause the video and read the entire text from the book. But I'm going to show it to you with an illustration so that it's easy to understand. So basically the top layer of the earth is called the crust. We have continental crust and then we have oceanic crust. The continental crust is the part on which we live. And suppose you go to a beach and then you start walking towards the water, you will notice that the water level will start rising. Actually the water level doesn't rise, the land gradually descends. Then all of a sudden, the continental crust will end at a very steep slope. That point is called as continental shelf break. So the region between the continental shelf break and the beginning of the beach is known as continental shelf. So this region is the shallowest part of the ocean. The width of the continental shelves vary from one ocean to another. The average width of continental shelf is about 80 kilometers. The shelves are almost absent or very narrow along some of the margins like the coast of Chile, the west coast of Sumatra, etc. On the contrary, the Siberian shelf in the Arctic Ocean, the largest in the world, stretches to 1500 km in width. The depth of the shelves also varies. It may be as shallow as 30 meter in some areas, while in some areas it is as deep as 600 meters. Now I want you to think about it. On a beach when we start walking towards the water, the land gradually descends, and beaches are composed of sediment. Then not to forget, even rivers, glaciers, wind bring massive amount of sediments from the land. And moments back I told you as we move towards the water, the land gradually descends. Naturally these sediments also follow the same path, and gets deposited on the continental shelf. Or in other words, we can say that the continental shelves are covered with sediments brought by rivers, glaciers and wind from the land. Now with time, this massive sedimentary deposits on the continental shelves become the source of fossil fuel. The second one is continental slope. Let's use the same illustration that I used for continental shelf. You remember this point right, where the continental shelf breaks. This is also the point where the continental shelf typically ends at a very steep slope. This is called the continental slope. And it connects the continental shelf with the ocean bed. The gradient of the slope region varies between 2 to 5 degree. The depth of the slope region varies between 200 and 3000 meters. The slope boundary indicates the end of the continental crust and the beginning of oceanic crust. You will find many canyons and trenches in this region. The third division of the ocean floor is deep sea plain. Again we'll look at the same illustration. The point where the continental slope ends, a horizontal plain land starts. It is an underwater plain on the deep ocean floor. Now deep sea plain is generally found between the foot of a continental slope and an oceanic ridge or an oceanic trench. A ridge is an uplifted landform like a mountain and a trench is a long narrow ditch. Deep sea plain are the flattest and smoothest regions of the world. The depth vary between 3000 to 6000 meters. These plains are covered with fine grained sediments like clay and silt. And the fourth major division of the ocean floor is 
oceanic deeps or trenches. Now these areas are the deepest part of the oceans. As I said, the meaning of trench is a long narrow ditch. That means these are like a cavity in the ocean bed. And this is what makes them the deepest part of the ocean. You must have heard about Mariana Trench. It is the deepest part of the world's oceans. It is somewhat around 10,994 meter below the sea level. Now always remember this point. Oceanic trenches are formed by subduction. Subduction is a geological process wherein a tectonic plate moves under another. It can be both continental plates or an oceanic and a continental plate or it can be in between both oceanic plates. In the case of an oceanic trench, the dense plate is subducted under the lighter plate and that makes the seafloor and the outermost crust to bend and form a V-shaped depression. So far 57 deep oceanic trenches have been explored. Out of 57, 32 are in the Pacific Ocean and 19 in the Atlantic Ocean and 6 in the Indian Ocean. So these were the four major divisions of the ocean floor. Now we will look at some minor relief features. The first one is mid-oceanic ridges. The meaning of the word ridge is a long narrow hilltop like a mountain range. It is basically an elongated uplifted piece of landform. And here we are talking about mid-oceanic ridges. That means it has to be on the ocean bed. So basically it's an underwater mountain system formed by plate tectonics. There is another term given to it. It is called seafloor spreading. Now what happens is that if you look at the structure of the earth, earth is divided into four layers. At top we have the crust, below that we have the mantle and then the outer core and at last we have the inner core. You see just below the crust we have the mantle. Now mantle consists of hot molten magma and that's what makes the mantle volatile. Now there is a convection current that takes place in the mantle. In a convection current, the hot molten magma continuously rises and sinks in a circular pattern. As a result, the convection current of the mantle makes the magma rise and spreads the oceanic crust by uplifting the oceanic crust. This creates an opening in the oceanic crust and the magma quickly emerges onto the ocean floor. Due to the cool ocean temperature, the magma cools and crystallizes and forms new crust. And that creates an uplifted landform in the form of a mid-oceanic ridge. If you see two oceanic plates are moving away from each other. Because there is a hydrothermal vent below the oceanic crust, you can also call it as oceanic volcano. And it is due to the eruption of magma, the ocean flow starts spreading. And that's how oceanic ridges are formed. The mountain ranges can have peaks as high as 2500 meter and some even reach above the ocean surface. A good example is Iceland. It is a part of the mid-Atlantic ridge. The second minor relief is sea mountains. It is a mountain with pointed summits rising from the seafloor that does not reach the surface of the ocean. If at all it emerges out of the ocean surface, then it will be an island or a cliff rock. Sea mounds are volcanic in origin. That means they are commonly found near the boundaries of Earth's tectonic plates. If you remember this picture, when we know that the Earth crust is divided into several plates that floats over the mantle, at the boundaries of these tectonic plates, sea mountains are formed. But then there is a catch. I mean, if you think about it, at the boundaries of the tectonic plates, two of the things can take place. One, either the tectonic plates will move away from each other, that's how sea flow spreading occurs, and two, the tectonic plates will move towards each other and in the process, one plate will move under another. This is called subduction. When sea flow spreads, the tectonic plates move away from each other that gives rise to oceanic ridges. That means when the tectonic plates move towards each other, that is during subduction process, that's when tectonic plates collide and one plate has to go under the another and that makes the magma rise from the mantle. So if the magma rises from the mantle, then naturally a vent will be created. A vent is a volcano. And these volcanoes in the ocean floor goes on to become sea mounts. So basically sea mounts are individual volcanoes on the ocean floor. Sea mounts tend to be circular or conical in shape similar to a volcano. This can be 3000 to 4500 meters tall. The Emperor Sea Mount is the chain of undersea mountain range in the Pacific Ocean located in Hawaii. The third minor ocean relief feature is submarine canyons. 
When you hear the word canyon, it means a deep narrow valley with steep sides. It is typically formed due to weathering and erosion activity done by rivers. They are often called as V-shaped valley because the stream of the river is so strong that it cuts the entire valley into a deep narrow valley with steep sides. Submarine canyons are formed at the junction between continental shelf and continental slope. When large river having strong stream drains into the sea, these rivers bring massive amount of sediments. The water pressure of a river can cut deep into a seabed by creating a deep narrow channel called as canyons. And that's how submarine canyons are formed. Because of their complex topographic features, submarine canyons are considered major reservoirs of marine biodiversity. Have a look at this picture. In this picture, you can see the global distribution of submarine canyons. The fourth minor ocean relief feature is Gyo. Now this term is pronounced as Gyo. Gyo is an undersea mountain, basically a sea mount with a flat top. Since it is a type of a mountain, hence it has to be of volcanic origin. Volcanic activity forms all kinds of underwater mountains. Gyo are usually found in deep ocean basins. The reason the top portion of the mountain is flat is because erosion by waves destroy the top of the sea mount, resulting in a flattened shape. Gyos are most commonly found in Pacific Ocean. These gyos stand at least 3000 feet above the sea floor, and the diameter of the flat top is at least 660 feet. The fifth and the last minor relief feature of the ocean floor is Atoll. These are low islands found in the tropical oceans consisting of coral reefs surrounding a central depression. So basically when an underwater mountain is formed due to volcanic eruption, it pierces the surface of the ocean. As time passes, a coral reef is formed around the volcanic island or the sea mountain. As more and more time passes, the volcanic island sinks due to erosive activities of the ocean wave making the top layer of the mountain flat. And in the previous topic, we saw that they are called geos. Finally, when the volcanic island completely sinks, all that is left is the surrounding coral reef. And in between the coral reef, a lagoon is formed. It's basically a central depression area. It may or may not be a part of the sea. If it is a part of the sea, then it will be highly saline. And if it is not a part of the sea, then it is a body of fresh, slightly salty water. So these were some of the minor relief features of the ocean floor. We have covered both major as well as minor features of the ocean floor. If you have any doubt, please go through it again because these features are very important from examination point of view. And if there's something that you don't understand, let me know in the comment section. There's also a second part to this chapter that concludes the rest of the chapter. Make sure you watch it. Meanwhile, all the pictures and illustrations are available on the Instagram page of this channel. The link is there in the description.